Well, good evening and welcome to Gateway Church Cymru Online. My name is Luke Morgan, I'm the pastor of Gateway and I'd like to give you a warm welcome this evening. Thank you for joining us for our online Bible study. You know, it's so great that we're still able to come together and dive into God's Word and learn about God's Word together. And I do pray that God would speak to us tonight as we continue our series called The Parables of Jesus. And before we begin tonight, I want to encourage you, please go and get your Bible Get your notepad, grab an iPad, whatever it is, and let's get ready to hear from the Lord this evening. Amen. Let's just open up our time together in prayer. Lord Jesus, we just thank you that we're able to be found in your presence tonight, Lord. Lord, we just thank you this evening that we can come and study your word together, Lord. And Lord, as we open up your word, I just pray, Lord, that you would help us to open up our hearts to hear from you this evening, Lord. Lord, would you speak into our lives? Would you bring encouragement, Lord? Would you bring correction where this correction needed, Lord? Lord, I pray, help us, Lord Jesus, so that our lives might just bring glory and honour to your name. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, tonight we're going to continue, as I said, our series called The Parables of Jesus. We've been going through this series over the last few weeks and we're looking at these short stories that Jesus used during his preaching and he used these to help people understand his teaching, to help understand what he meant when he was talking about the kingdom of God. You know, a parable is basically an earthly story with a heavenly meaning and Jesus shared these so that everybody can understand. And last week we began looking at this parable that, that Jesus shares in Matthew chapter 5 where he calls the people the salt of the earth. He's talking to the disciples and he says that we as disciples are the salt of the earth. And we're going to look at the second part of that, where Jesus says that we as disciples are the light of the world. And we're going to be reading from Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14 to 16. And we're going to read, first of all, in the New Living Translation, and then we'll read the Message Translation. And it says this, it says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. This is how the message translation puts it. It says, here's another way to put it. You are the light of the world. Bringing out the God colours in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this. As public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God. This generous father in heaven. You know, Jesus says there that you are the light of the world or we are the light of the world. And you know, when Jesus was referring to the light, he's not talking about this type of light, this electricity light that, uh, that we have nowadays. He was actually referring to something like this, this candle in a, in a clay pot. This is what Jesus was talking about. We are to be the light of the world. Now, the Bible tells us that Jesus, in fact, he is the light of the world. He is the light of the world. But now he says this interesting, interesting statement that we are the light of the world. In other words, what Jesus was saying here to his disciples was that we are to reflect him to the world around us. And he's commissioning us here to carry on his work. And in order for us to just understand what Jesus meant by this, we're actually going to look at for a moment a few things that light does and how this applies to us and how we as believers in today's society can be the light of the world. Now, the first thing that light does, light brings direction. You know, without the light, we won't be able to see where we're going, especially in the night times. We won't be able to see where we are going. 
I know that the people in Jesus' time, they would have understood that because during Jesus' time, they didn't have electricity. You know, they couldn't just go into the house and turn on a light. They had these candles and, and things like this in order to, to give light so that they would be able to see. They used these lamps to direct their way. And you know, it's the same spiritually. That's what Jesus is referring to here. Jesus is saying that he is the light of the world. And without him in our lives, then we will be blind spiritually. We won't be able to see where we're going. We won't understand the real meaning of life. We'll walk through this life aimlessly, without purpose, without direction. I wonder, are you watching this this evening? And do you find yourself like that? Without purpose, without direction in your life? Know that it is only Jesus who can bring that direction to your life. Jesus brings direction to all of our lives, for he is the light of the world. And you know, one of the ways that Jesus does this is through his word, through the Bible. You know, I love what it says in Psalm 119, verse 105, and it says this, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God speaks to us through his word and he directs us through his word. God illuminates the way, he lights up the way. And that's what he wants to do for our lives. Jesus wants to be the light in our lives and bring direction to our lives. And now for us, when Jesus says that we are the light of the world, we can help people, we can encourage people, we can guide people as we open up our lives to God and allow God to speak in and through us. We can share the good news of Jesus. We can tell other people about Jesus and how he brings direction to all lives. So the first thing that light does is it directs. The second thing that light does is it illuminates. Light illuminates all. You know, when I was a child, I was scared of the dark. I'm sure that many people online are watching this and maybe you were scared of the dark when you were a child as well. Maybe you're scared of the dark as an adult, even right now. But, you know, as a child, I was afraid of the dark. And the reason why I was afraid was because I thought that there was a monster hiding in the dark. I was scared of what could be hiding and lurking in the dark and what was going to get me. That's what I thought as a child. And every night when my parents used to send us up to bed, I'd always shout down to my parents to ask them to leave the, the hall light on, to he leave the passage light on because I was afraid of the dark. I wanted them to leave it on so that I could see a little bit what was there. And you know when, when they did, when they put the light on, then obviously it lit up the room and I, I was able to see then and I had peace, I was calm. And you know that light, it illuminated what was potentially in the dark. There was nothing there, but light illuminates danger. Light actually shows us what's really there in the dark. And you know, it's the same way in our lives. It's the same when Jesus comes into our lives. You know, the Bible says that we were once dead in our trespasses and sins. We were living in darkness. We were living in the kingdom of darkness. And we didn't know any different to the rest of the world. Our lives were blind. We didn't know what was there. There was hidden things within our lives. Our lives were a mess. But you know, when we heard that good news of the gospel, when we heard of what Jesus has done for us, you know, it's like the light is switched on in our lives. All of a sudden we see who we are. We see the muck, we see the mess, but we also see Jesus and what he does and how he changes our lives, how he forgives us of our sin. You know, the light shows what's really there and what's not. And you know, listen to what it says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 11 to 14. It says this, we also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you will have endurance or so you will all have the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in this inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave all of our sins. You know, we don't have to hide away anymore. We don't have to hide in shame or because of our guilt, because of what we have done. But Jesus paid it all. And now we can walk in freedom. We can live in the light. We don't have to hide anything because our God knows who we are. And he's forgiven us and he's saved us because light illuminates. We've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light because of Jesus. The third thing that light does is light gives hope. You know, as I shared, I was scared of the dark as a child. You know, the darkness frightened me. I was afraid of the darkness. And oftentimes I wouldn't be able to get to sleep. 
or my parents, they'd leave the light on for a certain length of time and then they'd knock it off thinking that I'd gotten to sleep, but I hadn't. And so I'd shout it again, Mom, Dad, knock the light on. You know, but as soon as they turned that light back on, you know, I was calm again. I was peaceful and then I was able to go back to sleep. You know, that lamp, it brought hope. It brought security. I had peace because the light was on. And, you know, just the same spiritually, Jesus is the one who brings hope and security when life is dark when we go through dark times he's the one who is brings the light to that you know we all go through darkness we all go through times where it feels like it's dark where we don't know the way where we're scared we're afraid of what's going on you know as we look at our world right now our world is going through a dark time you know we're going through the valley of the shadow of death it seems you know with all this that's going on with racism in our world with all that's going on with coronavirus you know there's wars there's fighting there's fears there's worries there's anxiety there's so much pain hurt our world is going through the darkness right now however i love the fact that even in the opening few verses of the bible when our god was creating this whole universe he said let there be light and that's what I'm praying for, that God's light would shine into the darkness, that his light would bring hope and life and security and peace and calm to all who would put their trust in him. You know, as the people of God, we do not have to be afraid at this time. With all that's going on, we don't have to be afraid because we know who we belong to. And our Savior is there for everybody, for whoever you are, no matter who you are, what your background is, what your skin color is, what you believe, what you don't believe. God is there if you put your trust in him. Jesus is for all people and you don't have to be afraid. You can cling to him. You can know him as your Lord and Savior. Our future is secure in him as well. You know, we don't know what's going to happen with coronavirus. We don't know you know how long we're going to be in lockdown we don't know the plan but we know the one who holds the future in his hands he holds us we belong to him and I really believe tonight that the Lord wants to encourage someone I believe tonight that God is saying to somebody who's watching online that he is with you he hasn't left you he is with you be calm be still know that the Lord your God is with you tonight I believe God wants to share that with someone I know this evening that God is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world and his light will never be extinguished. You know, the, the Romans thought that they did that. Satan thought they did that when they nailed Jesus on the cross. But three days later, he rose again. The light will endure forever. Jesus will live forever and ever. And we who put our trust in him, we also can receive that gift of eternal life. So light, it brings hope. And the fourth thing the light brings is light brings life. Light brings life. Now, Chloe and I, we recently bought the plant. We were updating our house a little bit. You know, we've been painting our house like many people are. We've been, you know, out the garden trying to tidy up our garden a little bit. And uh, we thought we'd, you know, get a few other things just to update our house a little bit. And so we decided to buy a plant. And uh, it's a house plant. And uh, I know that my mother, who will probably be watching online, she isn't very good with house plants, keeping them alive. And I seem to have inherited that same issue as well. And our plant that we bought only a couple of weeks ago, it started to die already. And I, I'm worried about it. You know, we spent a bit of money on it. We wanted to, to we, obviously we wanted to survive. Uh, and so I've been looking online at different things on how to keep this type of plant alive. And I came across an app that shows you, if you scan this uh, your camera on this plant, this app will tell you what is wrong with the plant and how you can rectify that issue. So I used that app. And it was funny, actually, that this app told me that this plant, it needs more light. And so we decided to move it every day. We actually pull this uh, this plant out so that it gets a little bit more light. And funnily enough, this plant has started to recover a little bit. It's not quite there. Uh, some of the leaves have withered away, but some of them, you can see that it's starting to, to get a bit of life back into it again. And the reason is, is because of the sunlight. The sunlight is giving it its life and it's starting to recover. You know, it's amazing to think, think that the, the sun, it brings life to all the plants and all the trees. And you know, it's the same spiritually as well. The sun, S-O-N, Jesus Christ, he brings life to all. He brings eternal life. You know what it says in John chapter 10, verse 10? This is Jesus speaking. He says the thief's purpose, that's Satan. He says the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. But my purpose is to give them a rich 
and satisfying life. You know, we were once dead in our sins, but when we heard the gospel and we surrendered our lives to Jesus, we've been made alive with God. The Bible says that we are new creations. The old is gone, the new has come. We have received eternal life. And there is only one way to receive eternal life and right standing with God is simply by believing in Jesus, turning away from your sin and asking him to be Lord of your life. When we surrender our lives to him, we're transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And our God brings life. So as we come to a conclusion this evening, you know, Jesus, he is the light of the world. And now he says to his disciples there that you also are the light of the world. Basically, you know, it's like the image of the sun. The sun in the sky brings life to all. And, you know, in the night, the moon is there and it shines bright and the moon reflects the light from the sun. And we are basically, in other words, we're like the moon. We are to reflect the light of Jesus to all those around us. Jesus has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of life and into the kingdom of light. And now it's our responsibility to shine God's light to the world. You know, there's people who've gone before us, who've done that in their time, in their generation. But now God is calling each and every one of us who currently belong to him, who know him as their Lord and Savior. He's calling us. It's our responsibility to tell this world about Jesus. Nobody else is it's ours. And God wants to use us. We are called to be a city on a hill. In other words, we are to shine bright. We are to be on display for all to see, sharing all that God has done in our lives. Our lives are to be a testimony of what Jesus has done through, uh, through our lives, in and through our lives. We are to be a beacon of light, directing people to the Lord. But you know, Jesus says there in Matthew 5 that it's no good if the light is hidden under a basket. Now, I don't have a basket this evening, but I do have my hat. Here we go, my hat. And Jesus says, it's no good, you know, like this lamp. It'd be no good if this was lit, this candle was lit, and I decided to cover it. The light would go out and it wouldn't help anyone. It wouldn't bring direction. It wouldn't bring hope. It wouldn't bring, you know, all these different things. And it's the same true spiritually. You know, if we cover our, if we are the light of the world and we get covered and we hide away and we shy away, then that's not going to bring light to anybody. It's not going to help anybody. But Jesus says there in Matthew 5, we're to be the light of the world. Don't hide away. You know, I think for so long the church has been hiding in the four walls of a building. But as I've shared so many times, the church is the people of God. And I really believe this season God is using this as a time to, for the church to realise that we are called to go into our world and make disciples. Not stay inside the building and wait for them to come to us. We are to go and share the good news. Good news isn't meant to be kept to ourselves. We're meant to share it with all those. We are meant to reflect the life and the light of Jesus to all those around us. And I want to challenge you tonight. I want to ask you this question. When was the last time you shared the gospel with someone? You know, obviously because of the times in which we live in, and obviously you might be not be able to uh, speak to someone face to face, but what about over the phone? When was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? You know, the time is short. As we look out at our world, you know, it's all indicating to the fact that Jesus is coming again. Let's not forget that. All that is happening is pointing to the fact that Jesus is coming again. He could come back at any moment and it'll be too late then. And so as believers, we've got this responsibility to tell other people about Jesus. Maybe you're watching this tonight and, and maybe you just feel your light has gone out. Maybe you feel like it's been extinguished. Maybe you're struggling or, or maybe you, you just find it difficult to share about Jesus with other people. You know, we, we need to keep that light burning. And you might be wondering, how do we keep the light of Christ burning in our lives so that all would see? How can we keep that shining in our lives? Well, you know, like that song says, the old song, it says, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. We need the oil of God. And you might be wondering, what, what on earth am I talking about? Well, the, the person who helps to keep our passion and our relationship with Jesus alive is the Holy Spirit. He is the oil that we need in our lives to keep the light burning. You know, they would have poured oil in these lamps to keep them burning right the way throughout the night, through the darkness. They would have poured more and more light on, so, uh, oil on so that the lamp would burn brighter and keep shining in the darkness. And it's the same with us. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives every day to keep burning, to keep following Jesus, to keep sharing about him. We need his life and his power within our lives. I know you might be wondering, well, who, who am I going to share with? How can I share this light? You know, it all starts in our home. 
We're called to share the light of Jesus to those closest to us, those who really see who we are. We are called to share the light of Jesus in our homes. We're to reach our families for Jesus and then the world around us. Our lives should be pointing all those in our sphere of influence to Jesus. And you might say, how can we be that light? And what what if you're struggling? What if you let that light go? Or, or maybe you haven't been doing it effectively, sharing about Jesus? Well, there's a few things. First of all, five things. I'm going to share them really quickly. First of all, we need to repent. We need to get our lives right. And if you're watching this and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, then we'd love to help you. We'd love to guide you in that and asking Jesus to come into your life. Please like this comment that's about to pop up in the comment section. And we'd love to get in touch with you and help you find out about how you can start a relationship with him. But if you are a believer watching, then it starts off with us getting our lives right, saying sorry for, for not sharing, for keeping the light to ourselves instead of sharing it with others. Second thing, be obedient to the Lord. Step out and be obedient to the Lord. Thirdly, pray and be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. Ask God to keep that fire burning. Spend time growing your relationship with the Lord. Number four, join a church family and join together with a church family. You know, as a, as a church family, we should be united in sharing the light of Jesus. It's not just one person, it's all of us. We're all called to be the light of the world. I know the light will shine even brighter if we are united together, telling all this world and all this valley about Jesus. So let's join together as a church family. And if you're watching this and you're not already part of another church, we'd love for you to join with us. Please get in touch with us and, and to find out more information about that. And then number five is just to share it with others. Just start having conversations. Tell other people about Jesus. I want to encourage us tonight. Let's not be greedy with the light. You know, it's too good. It's too powerful for it to be kept for ourselves. But instead, tonight, let's agree that we are going to be the light of the world, reflecting Jesus to all those around us. Amen. Well, I do pray that you've been encouraged as you've joined with us this evening, as we've looked at this parable of Jesus. And we're going to look at a few more over the next couple of weeks. So please keep coming back on a Thursday evening. And we'd love for you to join us on a Sunday as well for Church Online. Our service is at 10.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. And we're on Facebook, YouTube, and on our website, and on Instagram on a Sunday morning as well. We'll be streaming our services. So please join us, invite family members and friends as well. And please stay connected with us as a church through our website, gatewaychurchcanary.co.uk and also through our social media platforms. Please stay in touch with us and please know that we are here for you as a church. We are praying for you and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you Sunday. God bless.